That's uh, a lovely winter's morn. Figured I'd stop in and see what's for sale. Honey. Now a lot of people are asking, why do you have mud flaps on the front of your, uh, in front of your tires? And it's a very good question. It's the, uh, the guys that work in the bush, down the bush roads, they would know. But essentially what it is, because obviously your tire's turning like this, right? So it's going to spray mud that way. So that's the function of these back mud flaps. But a mud flap on the front is functional because let's say you're driving and you go through a puddle, right? So the tire's gonna hit the puddle, it's gonna splash water up, and it's gonna go up like this and cover up your headlights. So that is the purpose of the mud flap on the front. <laughs> cool. That's a nice Kenworth. Look how high it is. The bottom of the exhaust pipe's at my chin. Oh, and it's got a knobby. Extra points for the knobby. Uh, comes with a free Tim Hortons coffee. Ooh, I like those. Crooked Kenworth brake controllers. That's really nice. Oh, the button tuft. Picked up a rock. Back window there. Comes with an extra fan. I do like the, the windows. Doesn't make the bunk seem so small and miserable. Hmm. Come with jewelry. Big long deck. <laughs> Jonesy. You ready for this, bud? Uh, four check, back check, paycheck, bro. All right, what else is here? One of those international, what do they call things? Navistars? The pointy front ends. Oh, look at that beautiful fleet. Shutter. I gotta check the peak first. 389, moose catcher, assorted lights underneath. 15 inch cans. Oh yeah. Converted steering wheel. That's awesome. Let's see if she'll go. pressure you can do it it's not even that cold it's like minus three or something not celsius folks so that's not that cold That is a good looking peak. I prefer if it was a 379. The fact that it's a 389, this thing's still gonna go for, oh, I don't know, probably 70 grand. All right, what else can we look at? <sighs> no. You know, I don't mind the look of the International. At least it's something different, right? And it's a nice attempt at side air cans. You know you're in Alberta when you open the door and the snow goes blowing into the cab. Lone Stars, that's what it is. Not Navistar. Oh yeah, check it out. Now that's a big hole opening. So this actually lines right up. Oh, if I can get under the seat, got all the air in it. So I'll show you. So remember I did the, the big hole conversion on my cab, but there's still some some cab and some side all the way around. Whereas this, they've got the sleeper bunk kind of even all the way around to match up with the cab. That's really nice. This makes it nice and open. 
Yeah, this mattress has seen better days. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah, nice truck. Nice highway tractor. What's going on there? They got some kind of tin foil insulation wrap. DEF. Yeah. Oh, look at that nice Kenworth. See, same deal. Mud flaps on the front. Now you know what they're for. Yeah, big try drive. This is probably a logging truck. D cab try. Oh, I like the button tuft. Oh, a Kenworth CD player. How cool is that? Yeah, that's a good work truck. Four hundred thousand clicks. That's not much at all on these big rigs. I bet you this thing still goes for eighty grand, ninety grand, maybe with the try. Cool. Big Pete. Oh, look how high the fifth wheel plate is that's interesting that's a very different mount and look how much travel it has normally you can only bring it forward maybe 12 18 inches huh, it's very different i guess maybe with tri drives they want to have more flexibility to be able to to put the weight farther forward oh no this is the this is your standard here so I guess that's just something custom they did on this truck. That's cool though, you can put it all the way back. <laughs> Freedom air filters. That's different, huh? So what's that for? To keep any uh, heavier material from clogging up the, the intake? I don't know. I guess just a secondary filter of sorts <laughs> I like my certified dirty idle sticker on the Pete right, doesn't get much cheaper than that just plain Jane plastic oh yeah no, no gear shifter either no third pedal look at this isn't this cute so what do you do I don't even know feels like you could break this thing Smart shift. Smart shift my ass. <laughs> uh, you can keep it. Well, there's a nice another FLD. With a flat top. This could actually be a decent truck. 13 inch cans. If you added the exhaust back in there. I wonder why they took it off. Oof. Yeah, good old Freightliner steering wheels. Oh, I love that classy seat. Looks like it came out of a Chrysler Fifth Avenue. <laughs> yeah, definitely need stacks be a cool truck well I guess it's got one stack it's just way too short way too small could be a cool truck a little bit of work at least it's an extended hood <laughs> after he hit his first deer he was like screw it we're gonna put a real bumper on the front of this thing or actually it looks like this was already on here hit something and it banged in to break it that is a funky looking sleeper look at the airflow on that so it obviously come up over the hood through the visor and then it kind of tucks tucks around the cab or the uh the top of the cab there huh interesting you ever seen that or never noticed it before international 
And a double bunk for team drivers. Automatic transmission for folks that don't want to don't want to learn how to shift. Newspapers and tape to block out the light. What a beauty! <laughs> yeah, no. Pass. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of fuel savers here today. I like though how every third truck's got a moose catcher on the front. That's Northern Canada for you. Well, I like the paint on that one. Good hernies. It's got a bunch of them here. Missing a bumper. Yeah. These guys are built for mileage, aren't they? What's that thing get? 10 miles to the gallon? No, uh, try like seven. <laughs> what about you? Biodiesel dog. But we try to ride bikes when we can, global crisis and whatnot. Whatever, man. Oh, there we go. Decent square hood. Man, the front end sure seems high. Classic 13 speed. Color matching aftermarket wheel. Big old sleeper. Missing CB radio. 1.2 million on a 389 short hood. Eh, it's still gonna go for 70. Would look better with the flat top cab and the flat top bunk in my opinion. And you'd have to go to the truck shroud company and get the, the flat top conversion because it's kind of sloped down, the anteater hood. You can actually convert those. I sell a kit to make it a flat top. So it'd be a flat top short hood, but I still think it would look better. Oh, it's got hydraulics though. At least I think that's what that is. Yeah, you see the big old hydraulic lines there. So a guy could run an end dump with this thing. That would be cool. And there's something you don't see too often anymore. It's flames. And look at that funky exhaust setup. Why wouldn't you just come straight from there right into the pipe? I didn't think cats were clean idled. Yeah. You keep it. Nah. Somebody stopped by Spectrum to get everything polished out before he sent it to auction. I never understood. Why do people send trucks to auction without cleaning them up or throwing some paint and a little bit of polish on them? I, I have to believe that that brings you a little, a few extra dollars when it comes time to sell. And look at those welds. Those are decent. Decent. Oh man, they parked this guy close together. Yeah. Polished out the steps, the air cans. Very nice. Oh, not a fan of these steering wheels though. I'm actually not sure though, that, that can't be, no there's no airbag in there, that's just the horn. Still can't figure out why, why a guy spends 80 or 100 grand on a truck, doesn't use, and doesn't bother to put a decent aftermarket steering wheel on there. I guess some guys don't mind them. Oh, tilt the steering's a little loose. Manual, emergency, oh engine, oh it's got the, the shut off for the oil patch. Sometimes these trucks, oh look, it's only one, minus 1 1.5 Celsius. It's nothing. Uh, sometimes the trucks will get running if there's uh, hydrocarbons in the air when they go to into the oil field. And it'll start sucking uh, whatever's in the air, whether it's H2S or any other types of uh, gases. And the engine could run on that. And then it'll just keep sucking more and more in and start revving higher and higher. And it can be a runaway. So that's why they've got this manual shut off where you hit that button if it starts doing that. And it just got, it's got a flap in the intake, flap, a butterfly valve and flaps closed and it'll then kills the engine. So I think it's uh, actually on a lot of, a lot of companies, a lot of different sites, the, uh, it's mandatory that you have that 
before you drive out there. Oh, it's a nice 379. Or is it, no, it's a short hood that's sloped, so it might be a 377. Again, needs these side lights shaved off. But yeah, kind of a cool piece. I like the color. Man, this is aerodynamic auction and uh, short hood auction. Not many long hoods here. Flat top peat though, that's still kind of cool, right? Seven hundred thousand kilometers, so half a million miles. The shortages just don't have the same draw. Oh, at least it's a fan of the of the oil. Uh, the short hoods just don't have the same draw as the long hoods, obviously. I'm digging the purple running lights. So they don't they don't uh, bring in quite as much money. So there's the air ride cab or the unibuilt bunk that I was talking about. So they've got the, the sleeper bunk and the cab. Let's see if we can see the mount bolted together solid. But then the cab is on... Um, well, it's, I guess it's solid mounts at the front and it rocks on those and then it's bags at the back. So the cab and the, the sleeper move as one. And then this should have the bigger ring, obviously. Yeah. See, larger big hole rings. You can tilt your seat back just like that guy's doing. So again, if you don't have a, if you've got the, the small hole or a truck with a, with a smaller opening, crawl through or walk through you can reach out to truck shrouds and they'll sell you a kit to make a uh, to make it a big hole to be able to do that oh little t600 no it's probably a t800 it's got the big aerodyne cab though that's nice oh same deal that's that uh shut off valve Man, these buttons have been well worked, huh? How many miles? Yeah, lots of them, lots and lots of them. 1.7 million kilometers. <laughs> oh, it's even got the factory sunroof. That's pretty mint. Yeah, this thing's got uh, a lot of wear and tear on it. Actually though, for almost two million kilometers, it doesn't look too, too bad. Aerodyne cabs are cool with the, the windows up high. The aero cabs, aerodyne cabs. You can be able to stand up and put a pair of pants on in the morning. Yeah, good work trucks. Definitely a good work truck, but not uh, not something you'd really want to sink a bunch of money into to make it customized into a show truck. This is definitely the the work truck auction. Oh, a nice 900. Please tell me it's a long hood. Work truck auction and uh, aerodynamic fuel saving option, auction. Yeah, so that's an extended hood. You notice it's got some space. Typically it's about seven, eight inches past the hood, whereas the short hoods will come down and line up directly with the fender. The long hoods or extended hoods go back a bit further. With the Icon 900. It's the newer style aerodyne cab. The VIT button tuft. Fancy stitching in the in the headrest. Oh, and a Kenworth Smart Wheel. Huh, right on. Oh, the bunk is nice too. Oh, it's stepped down. Look at that. Yeah, this is a really nice bunk. So it's a double bunk. So this flips down, and then you can have team drivers. So the you can just keep on trucking, the wheels never stop turning. Now how do these work? Yeah, there you go. You got the nice natural light that can come in. Obviously covered with snow right now. Digging the nice high bunk. This would be a great highway tractor. And you see, there's the difference. All the little uh, symbols aren't worn off. 
like they were on the other one. How many miles on this one? No, oh, no, let's have a shut off or battery's dead. Yeah, definitely not 1.7 million, I'm guessing. Probably around a million. And this thing's probably gonna go for, for damn near 100 grand. Huh. These things don't even deserve to be called Peterbilt. <laughs> we use 10W30. Can't even put decent oil in it. Got to add DEF. Plastic everything. Probably an automatic too. Oh, of course it is. Oh. Nice steering wheel though. No, thanks. It's funny, when I, some of the Peterbilt dealerships I went by last time I was in the States, just rows and rows of these. Just like 50 of them or 100 of them just all lined up. All the same cookie cutters. Get any color you want as long as it's white. Oh, now there we go. There we go. The first and only hood I've seen at this auction so far. It's the General Lee Orange. DEF, but you can delete that. Please tell me they're real pipes. Oh yeah, yeah, look at that, look at that, they're connected. <laughs> oh, look at the shifter too. Uh, that's classy, too much air in the seat. We'll fix that, which one's air? Oh, there we go, there we go. That's how you drive a Pete, sitting on the floor. Oh, nice big bunk. And you see he, he extended the original shifter was probably about this height here. And then when he put the new uh, longer bar in, he had to extend the airline. So he just used these little fittings and did a beautiful job. Very custom with the electrical tape. Oh, a 13 speed, you'd think this would be a, an 18 in this nice new 389. Now let's see if it runs. How many miles on it? 1.3. No. <laughs> it won't start. It doesn't like minus one. No, oh, that's not good. Well, I don't want to punish it too much. Someone's going to buy this truck, so we'll just let it be, but... <laughs> Yeah, if it won't start at zero degrees, that's uh, that's a pretty sad day, I'd say. Darn, I wanted to hear those pipes. Oh, a little bit of a little bit of blistering on the frame rails. That's a good-looking truck, but it probably needs a new engine. Man, I do like those pipes, though. Yeah, they're still bringing a bunch of equipment in, getting ready for the sale. Oh, check it out. I love oil sands. <laughs> I do too. Yeah, these are the, ooh, look at this big old Kenworth. Look at those tires. 24 R25s. That is impressive. Yeah, that's quite the truck. Got to go to the fisheye lens to, to get the whole truck in it. North 55, beauty. Look, this one's even taller. Look at old twin sticks, it's six foot one. And I can crawl, I could stand underneath the front fender without ducking. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, these are, these are built for clearance. Oh, that's a, that's a four wheel drive. Check that out. Big planetary gearbox in the front. Isn't that awesome? Swanberg Brothers. Look at the Leafs. <laughs> right on. A whole bunch of chains. Oh, can you imagine this thing fully chained up and locked up? Now, that's an interesting suspension. And of an upside down camelback. Look how low that is to the ground though. You'd think that 
it's only maybe six inches off the ground before those brackets are dragging. You'd think they would have designed that with a little more clearance. Or maybe, I think they had larger tires on this at one point. I don't know, it just seems those would be dragging. Well, that's, uh, that's probably pretty safe. Got like four inches to stand here on a snowy platform to open the door and swing the door open and knock yourself off into the mud. There we go, we finally get inside. Oh. Backup camera, yeah, no kidding. I'm actually thinking I might do something similar with the Duke and put that up on top of my stainless steel dash because that way I'd be able to see out uh, cab overs are notoriously bad for being able to see if any traffic's coming when you're trying to turn onto a roadway. Yeah, that's cool. Of course, got the Canadian intakes. And look at those mirrors. Those are huge. Yeah, people telling me that the Duke's too long. Uh, I beg to differ. Look at this thing. I sure wouldn't want to have to chain these up. 66 by 43 on 25 inch rims. Put both air together. That's crazy. It's funny, no matter how big the trucks get or the tires get, it's still the exact same 30-30 brake plots. Well, those might not be 30-30s, they might be a longer stroke, but same idea, not that much different, huh? Oh, this one articulates in the middle. <laughs> yeah, danger. Rotating drive line, so don't stick your hand in there. And don't stand here either, because this will close on you. Diesel only. No kidding. What else would be in this thing? <laughs> that is cool, isn't it? Look at that front end. Ugly and cool at the same time. All right on. I sure could use that trailer. Drag home some extra trucks. There's a nice gravel truck. Well, check out this bus. Looks like it's in pretty rough shape. Doors open, just inviting, inviting us in. <laughs> I could start a, uh, a bus service. Yeah, this thing is in rough shape. Oh, it's got the old TVs. I remember when they started adding TVs. I used to ride the Greyhound all the time. When I was young, when I was younger, and I always wanted to ride on the Red Arrows because the Red Arrows had the, had the TVs. So back in my day, they didn't have internets and phones and iPads and all that stuff. So you just had to stare out the window and read an Archie comic. But the Red Arrow had movies, which would have been so cool to enjoy. But I never got to try the Red Arrow out. There's a cool gravel truck. Yeah, there's not a lot here. Not a lot here. The, the winter auctions don't, don't always draw in as many, as many rigs and as much equipment as the spring and falls. I think uh, folks that are selling stuff, they prefer... They prefer to hold on to them, like say for the spring and fall, just because there's more more eyes, better chance of of selling it. Well, there was a few few decent trucks like this 900 long Kenworth Watt Construction Service. Man, I bet you this thing has seen some seen some hard working days. Kenny. But it's still fun to stop in and kind of check out what's for sale. 
see what prices they're doing. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for following along. Oh, look at that, Pete. And uh, appreciate you watching all this, watching all my videos and commenting down below. Cool stuff. I like the color of this, actually. Yeah, getting distracted. I guess there's a couple beauties here up at the front. Yeah, this is an awfully new, awfully new Kenworth. This is way out of Twin Sticks price range. Good looking truck though. Ooh, I like that. Let's the paint color through, through the logo. And keeps your front fenders from getting rock chipped. I do like this too, that's, that's old school. To have the plates on the little rocker panel. I'm definitely gonna do that on the Duke. Yeah, that's sharp. Anyway, where was I? Uh, again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to comment down below. Hope to see you next week, and like I always say, don't ever forget, if you got it, truckers brought it.